Okay, so we are back for yet another uh, sneak peek into artist studios. This time I have Portland artist Shachi Kale with me. And uh, Shachi, we met, oh gosh, I guess it's a couple years ago now as part of the same Thrive group, which is uh, women connecting, in our case, online and supporting each other. So it's kind of natural that we're here on a Zoom call again. <laughs> again, yes. <laughs> Right Do you want to take a few minutes and introduce yourself and let us know where you are, what you're doing, and all of that? Yeah, so hi. Uh, my name is uh, Shachi Kali, and I am an Arizona-based artist. I'm originally from India. I moved here after I got married, and it's been 20 years. So I don't know if I'm like now an Arizona native because I've just been here this long. Uh, so I, by profession and... Um, Education, I'm a graphic designer, and I continue to do that on the side. I work for uh, community colleges here and any freelance design work. So I have a home studio, and I have been trying to segue and, you know, work as a visual artist and, you know, put my art out there, uh, be part of the gallery circuit, have shows, you know, just Instagram. Uh, so I'm trying to reverse the proportion of, you know, design and art. Earlier it was, you know, more design and just, you know, doing art as a hobby and I'm, I'm trying to switch over where, you know, I really am able to pay attention to my art and do more of it. Right. And so. you've had, just in the time that I've known you, you've had amazing growth. I remember being with you through your first show and now yes. I see your stuff everywhere. I see articles about you and like you have had a huge impact. So... Bravo. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. I think Thrive. I think Thrive and that whole, uh, you know, are the gr group of women who were supportive and who were there to help me. This, you know, very mysterious world of art uh, that I was kind of just dipping my toe into. It was amazing to have uh, this network of amazing, you know, women artists who handheld me through that first year. And I think it made uh, so much of a difference. Yeah, very cool. Yay. Well, you were kind enough to walk around with your video camera and give me a real peek into your world. So I'm going to play the video. I'll get mm -hmm. you to talk us through it. And then I have some sure. questions for you that I'll want to. Of course. Wanna dive to do into. That. So let me just do a screen share here. So mm -hmm. we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And that should pop up. And one second. Come on, there we go. So here we are. And Shachi, I'll just point out the at there, that is your Instagram handle that where people would find Yes, that's it, right? right. That's okay. my Instagram handle. <laughs> awesome, so I'm just gonna get the volume down here. And here we go. Okay, so this is a little peek into my Arizona backyard. Please excuse the dying grass. We were <laughs> expecting <laughs> to have things fixed in the backyard and then, you know, pandemic struck. Yeah. So, well, it's, it's beautiful outside. Everything is blooming. The skies are a beautiful bright blue. And, uh, but what you can see there is the temperatures are creeping up uh, to over 100. So it's beginning to get a little hard to sit out there in the backyard and, you know, just enjoy that little patch of outside that we are allowed to have right now. Um, we still do, you know, we still do sit out and evenings are pleasant, but, uh, and you know, this chap that I have to hang out with. Mm -hmm. um, and this I wanted to share was, is, you know, our life has changed and so the house has changed a bit. This is our Karam Central. Uh, so we all kind of step out of our rooms every few hours and play a family game of Karam, which is a very popular Indian, board it's not a board game it's just a game so that's you know that's kind of our sanity saver and stuff we do together and this is my studio space it used to be a third car garage and now we've converted it to the space which is my happy place and um this is my wall of you know my boys and their boy pictures and as i was telling carol uh i used to look at it fondly when they were in school like once in a while i just stand there and look oh my boys have grown but now they pop into my office like every 15 <laughs> minutes so i'm not so fond about them all anymore <laughs> uh, this is my workstation and this is where i do all my graphic design work and you know scanning my images and 
working on them. Um, so a lot of my time does get spent there, but as you can see right now, it's being shared by my boys. Um, they, it's, I think it's their happy place too. They seem to come in a lot. Uh, this is a little bulletin, you know, just a board which has fun things on it, photographs of, you know, who I used to be, who I am, uh, friends, and, you know, just things that make me feel happy. Uh, the messy desk. I was told not to clean it up because artists like to see messy desks. <laughs> so true. <laughs> and clearly I need to change the water in that bowl, but, you know, that's how it's, it's real. Um, just stuff and, you know, this, I, I keep my work in progress in these drawers, lots of books for inspiration. I collect dolls and stuff and uh, a little peek into my storage space that's behind me. And I like, you know, I like to do stuff with fiber and fabric and I've collected lots of things that we hide behind those doors. Um, and, you know, more books, piles of books. And this is my wonky wall of art. So for a long time, I had that wall bare because I had these visions of having a beautiful wall of art where I, you know, put up stuff really nicely and curated. And then I just didn't do it because I was paralyzed. So I decided I'm just gonna, you know, put push pins in the wall and just hang stuff up there because it make, gives me so much joy. This is art by friends and, you know, artists that I admire and I've collected like bot prints and there's Janine and Manuja whose work I admire. There's Michelle Landell, another Thrive artist. And, you know, some of it is my work, some of it is collected stuff. And it just makes me really happy to have this art you know, watching over me as I work. So uh, this is, you know, me storing my art in not the best way possible. <laughs> uh, just my current work in a drawer. Uh, and like yeah, I was saying, it's probably, sorry. <laughs> it's probably time for me to get organized since we have so much time on our hands now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was a little tour of my studio space. Awesome. So many things in there, just totally interesting. So many, too many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. I watched your video and I was setting it up and uh, my poor husband was trying to get out to something and I'm like, you got to help me. I was planning to do a gallery wall like that. And when I uh -huh. saw you giving yourself the freedom to just, you know, um, put pins up and make it loose and stuff. I'm like, oh, I got to stop putting that off. And so we got all the art out and uh, oh. now it's lying all around the house. So <laughs> <laughs> but I'll but I hope that it. inspires you to kind of just go wild and have it out there. <laughs> you did. It, it totally did. And I shall. So uh, I took a little walk through. I'll share a little glimpse of my studio. When, uh, uh -huh. when I did my walk through a couple of sessions ago, if anybody wants to see it, you can go back mm -hmm. to the first, uh, the first artist in residence live video but um but one spot i showed was this little loft where i'm sitting right now uh -huh. and uh and i was uh, getting it set up this morning and i thought gosh you know i've moved all this stuff up i haven't even used it so i came up this morning and uh, here we go i'm just gonna uh, i i put the arms on my press like i've got all this stuff crammed in this little wow. space so now to get to the bathroom i'm gonna have to kind of scoot around those <laughs> Danger arms. My table is so tiny, it's two night tables and a plank, because that's all I had room for. But I decided I'm not gonna wait anymore, I'm gonna make some stuff. So just this morning, I grabbed oh, this, uh, this lino, um, piece of lino in a, a circle, and I popped the little M in the middle there to make a monogram. And now oh. that we're starting to socialize again, we've got family coming, uh, I made a set of six placemats. So that's... Uh, that's broke the seal on the new on the new studio <laughs> it's so tight in here I had to use the ladder that leads up to the sleeping loft up above as my drying rack and ah. uh, and I'm pressed right up against I love to paint big when I paint so I'm pressed up against these big wood uh, cradles that I've got on the go and my trolley with my supplies is tucked behind there there's my mini desk and Shachi as you were talking about it being a hundred degrees right this second it's dumping snow out my studio oh my gosh it's snow. hard to imagine <laughs> we're like one week from january and i'm just oh like, my gosh when is it gonna end it's crazy so uh so that's my world at the moment and uh yeah it's um it's fun just to see 
the different lives we're all living right now. You know, like I'm on this mountaintop, you're in a beautiful sunny space. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons too sunny right now. <laughs> <laughs> too sunny. Let's put them. Let's just drag them both just, to the just full trying to get the two worlds closer. Yeah, we'll meet somewhere in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> So I was super curious how you are managing with your boys in the house. Like, what has that been through all of this while you're trying to work and create art? It's definitely been an interesting, you know, transition. So I'm at a point now where, like, this is the new normal. We have some kind of routine and structure. It's, it's a loose structure, but there is some structure. The first few weeks were very disorienting. Uh, actually, when uh, the whole shutdown situation started, we had just returned from uh, spring break in Atlanta. And now it feels like, you know, worlds away. I'm like, how did we fly on a plane and be close to people and, you know, just be out there? But we got back and everything shut down. Yeah. So we were still on spring break for a week. So it still felt like we were easing into everything and we didn't need structure. But I think week two, I was struck hard because I always, I mean, I love spring break. We have two weeks of it. And I'm always looking forward to my boys kind of going back to school and having a routine so I can be back in my studio and, and work uninterrupted. So it's been challenging because they had to, you know, schools went online. I have one high schooler and one uh, fourth grader. And uh, it was interesting for sure. I felt also like I needed to produce a lot of art mm -hmm. and I should feel you know I felt obliged to produce you know corona art like lockdown art yeah. and uh, there was a lot of pressure so I uh, I kind of got paralyzed for a bit uh, but I decided to just you know not put so much pressure on myself anymore and just do what felt natural and so and also carve out like little islands of time because I know my boys kind of think it's all free flow. They keep walking in and out of my studio. My dog walks in and out. Uh, it's not really conducive for lots of thinking. Right. So I'm just doing a lot more doing, you know, stuff that, you know, colors and, and stuff that doesn't need me to think so much. Right. So it's been, it's been a transition, but I think I'm, we're at a happy place right now. Yeah. And how is that showing up in the work? Are you? So like I said, in the beginning, I felt obliged almost to, as an artist, you know, have a, a expression of, you know, this crazy time and this whole isolation. And though I'm f I was feeling it a lot, yeah. I don't think I had enough time to absorb. I think this might be something that would grow inside of me and maybe come out maybe even next year or maybe years later. And I just couldn't like, I just couldn't like churn out something that wasn't there yet. So I did a few pieces that I felt kind of expressed what I was feeling, but um, I felt it felt forced and I didn't feel happy. So I just decided to kind of relax and play around with uh, new, you know, mediums just to break that idea of I should be yeah. doing something. Yeah. Uh, so I've been using a new medium that I have never used before. I'm using acrylic gouache and uh, it's, it's making me happy. It has these bright colors and I have a basic set. So yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of have a limited palette by the limitation of just not having more colors. Yeah. And uh, it's been interesting. And I'm, I've kind of dived back into a subject that I've been exploring is that my desert landscape and just the things in the desert that, you know, inspire me, the plants and just the landscape. So it's, you know, I've kind of not allowed, like not let that pressure force me to do something artificial that doesn't feel right to me. Right. So I'm still making happy art, even though the situation is kind of grim. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your art is always, it always has a, like a vitality and a, and a joy to it. It'll be, it'll be and, I, and I really hear you about the whole, um, you need an incubation time for it to be yes. an authentic reflection of, of how we're feeling and, and what it is. And so, yes. yeah, I am definitely staying tuned <laughs> to see what you do in the next several months. It's, uh, uh -huh. yeah. So your, uh, your graphic design job, did you do that from home previously as well? Were you always working at home? 
Yeah, no, it's been um, since my older son who turns 15 this week, um, since he was two years old and started going to preschool, I transitioned to working from home. And I found that was really easy for me as a mom of a young child because they fall sick so often and I just didn't feel I could kind of do justice to a nine to five job and also have the stress of, you know, needing to take time off all of a sudden for my kids. So the work, the place that I work with, the uh, Maricopa Community College District, like I work for a specific community college there, they were really kind and flexible and they encouraged me to, you know, work from home. And I love the setup. I'm a homebody. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes wild horses to drag me out of my house. So <laughs> this lockdown is like the perfect. I've been, I've been preparing for the lockdown my whole life. Yeah. I'm happy to be home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So I, it worked well for me as, you know, first as a mom of one and then as a mom of two to have that flexibility to work from home. Yeah. So I, I do that work. Yeah. And, and so there's the, the reality of kind of everyday working. It sounds like you're, you're doing the same kinds of things in the same kind of space, just with more interruptions, right? Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, and, a, and a different feel. But with a family um, in that age bracket right now, um, how else is it affecting you? Like, are the, are, are the kids, are you as a family... Uh, is there a fear factor? Is there a different awareness? What's happening there? I'm lucky that I don't have infants and toddlers because that I think would have been very challenging to keep them occupied and, you know, just happy. Um, right now, my younger child is 10 and my older uh, son is 15. So they have had some amount of school work to keep them a little bit, you know, a little busy. Um, they've surprisingly not complained. They're not missing, you know, their old life. They, they do miss meeting their friends, but on the whole, they've kind of taken to this new situation uh, very well. I was surprised that, um, and the other thing is, I think we've kind of tried to keep the, you know, the atmosphere more uh, positive, but, you know, scientific. Yeah. Where we are kind of discussing, you know, the scientific, aspects of what we learn and just not being very alarmist about it. So I don't think the mood of the house has been very, uh, you know, panicked or, you know, doomsday. Right. We're kind of taking it one day at a time. We're also super fortunate that both me and my husband can work remotely. Yeah. So it hasn't seriously affected our, you know, day-to-day -day work life. So we've just kind of tweaked things where, you know, we sleep much, much later. I think everyone sleeps at midnight, my boys and all of us. And so we wake up later. So that's been a change. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of cooking, mm -hmm. which honestly, that I'm not, <laughs> I'm not game with that so much. We've not done takeout. We've, I was counting the days. It's like we have cooked like 250 meals, uh, you know, in the last two months because yeah. we've been, you know, anxious about the whole takeout situation. Is it safe? Is it, you know, all of that. Uh, luckily, my husband's a great cook, so he takes on a couple of days, so I get a break, and I don't get, you know, upset about the whole, I can't do this anymore, and then I cook. So there have been those, you know, new things where, but there's also been, like, more downtime, or I, I do sit out and kind of just look at the trees and, you know, watch nature so much more yeah. um, now that, you know, there's no... There's no drop-off time. There's no pickup. There's no soccer practice. <laughs> yeah, no basketball. It's just slowed the pace of life down yeah. significantly. Yeah. It so feels, it feels like we're all a little more introspective now. Yes. Yeah. And Definitely. I wonder. I wonder what uh, the long term, like as things open up, if they open up, how long that'll be for. Like we really don't know what's what's in front of us. Um, but I wonder what kind of changes we're going to carry with us are there things that are happening in your house that you think oh yeah like let's however far back we go let's keep this new kind of practice are you that's really interesting and i've been thinking about that and there are some things that i think we're going to carry over it's like i think we're going to be really mindful about wastefulness Mm -hmm. uh, in this time, we've noticed that, you know, every last drop of milk, every last, you know, bit of dough and bread is just 
We're like, nope, we're not tossing stuff. We are eating everything because we are just trying to be really careful. And that feeling of, you know, scarcity, uh, it's like, you don't know. So, so don't be so casual with what you have. Yeah. So I think that's something I hope we will continue and not go into this consumer rush again. That's like, you know, everything is uh, replaceable and you can toss stuff. And I think we're just going to be more careful. I think we're seriously thinking about growing a vegetable, <laughs> vegetable garden. <laughs> you know, yeah. Just in times of, you know, the next pandemic, let's have our own potatoes and tomatoes yeah. growing in our backyard. So we might, you know, might turn back to nature a little more and, uh, you know, just appreciate the, you know what we have. Yeah. Uh, in in other terms, I mean, I'm I'm an anxious person, so I think I might be the last one to crawl out of my you know underground tunnel when this whole thing <laughs> comes out. I'll be like, it looks like everyone's out, but maybe I'll stay under my rock for another month. So I think it's going to be hard for me to get out there and feel mm. safe, yeah. you know, for a while yet. Mm. Um, I, I don't really know that to, I think my husband has discovered that working from home isn't as, uh, you know, terrifying as he had thought it would be because we have the luxury of space and we kind of all, you know, go off into our own personal spaces, do our thing and come out, you know, to eat and to play carom. And it's not been as, uh, you know, intense as he thought it would be. So yeah. we've discovered that we all like being home. Yeah. Uh, and with each other. So that's been uh, interesting. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> yes, that is definitely a good thing. <laughs> people out there might we wouldn't want to discover that. otherwise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been joking, my husband and I, just something I saw online, but it said, uh, you know, all this time isolated, it's really made us think. We've had a long conversation. We've decided that we don't want to have any kids. So... Uh -huh. We're going to wait until after dinner to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I should tell mine soon. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what we're finding now, like as things, I mean, here in Canada, it's, um, we're, we're, you know, we, it went into immediate and complete shutdown, especially here yeah. in Columbia. And so we've had very few cases, like it's been very under control. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, and uh, we feel super fortunate. And, uh, and now it's kind of, people are starting to open up to within yeah. the family group. So for us, it's our kids. Uh, my brother and his wife moved back up from the States. They're, they're staying <laughs> fairly close by. Oh, my dog apparently is here as well. <laughs> And, uh, and we're finding like it just, um, when you have to really think about who you're going to let into your bubble, you know, those relationships yes. are so important. And uh, yeah, it's, yes. it's really nice to kind of all see each other and say, yeah, you know, I, I care about you. We all care about each other's safety and, and uh, but you're in mm -hmm. One in my bubble, and uh, yeah, it's been. A <laughs> <long time. laughs> I know, yeah. I know. It's it, it's a little. Um, it's interesting how, uh, you know, you instantly go into your smallest, tiny, you know, family group bubble for safety, and it, it's going to be interesting to see who you allow into the next circle yeah. of safety as you know this goes along. It's. Uh, yeah, it's not something that like I I see if I see a lot of people it it worries me now. Yeah. It's not something that we'd never thought of earlier. And coming from India, where you know crowds and crowds of people right. uh, is the norm, uh, it just feels alarming now to be in close contact with anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just uh, it's awesome to reconnect with you like this. I'm glad you're in a situation where you've got space, you've got your family, you've got your beautiful artwork. Uh, for people who are watching this and want to see your work, where would they find you online? I think the best place to find me would be on my Instagram where I'm really regular and I post often. Uh, that would be at Shachi Dreams. That would be my first name, S-H-A-C-H-I Dreams. Um, I also have a website uh, that is shachikale.com. Um, I'm going to be a flaky artist and declare that it is not the most up-to-date. Uh, I should be using this time to make it more current, but you can go there to see uh, my past, you know, past work and shows and other things I do. Um, yeah, I think those are the two places. And I think I have a Facebook page uh, also, an artist page, which is, again, Shachi Dreams. Right. 
Oh, sounds good. And uh, if you are looking for more information about this project we're doing, uh, it's at Artists in Residence Live on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, if you're looking for info about me, I'm Carol McQuaid Art. That's the website, the Instagram, the Facebook, the Woiks. Uh, Shachi, thank you so much for taking this time. Great to catch up with you. And I just wish you a, a peaceful moving forward from here at whatever pace you choose for yourself and your family. <laughs> thank you so much, Carol. It was a pleasure. And uh, I was uh, thrilled to be a part of this Artist in Residence program. So, wow. and it was wonderful to talk to you again after the two year gap. <laughs> yes, you too. So we'll be back next week. We've got a couple of artists who are joining us. And uh, after that, we're just going to take it as it goes. So stay tuned on the Instagram site to see when we have episodes coming out. When we do have them, we'll have watch parties on Saturday. So Saturday at 11 and we will see you there. Yay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thank you. Bye.